Welcome back to another episode of Not Your Typical Podcast. I'm your host, Charlene Aminoff, and this episode is dedicated to Louis Nishmat, Miriam, Sarah, Bat Yaakov, Moshe, to be a tremendous aliyah for her neshama as well as a zuchut for her whole family. You're going to also want to tune in because during this episode, we're going to be talking about an unbelievable campaign coming up for Ornava. You're going to hear some amazing stories about me and Rabbi Wallerstein, Zecher Tzadik Levracha, and you're going to have an opportunity to donate to the Sefer Torah being written for his legacy. Keep watching, so much coming your way, but if I can tempt you with this spoiler alert, this episode is featuring two really fabulous humans, Shimi Adar and Alex Fletcher. So the three of us had the zechut to record a segment for Super Seder from my center's yeshiva, Adar Satora. And we were all sitting around in the Living Lachaim headquarters and we just, the podcast had ended and we were schmoozing and we were talking and then I was like, wait, can we just turn this into a podcast on my show? And they're like, yeah, so... Without further ado, here is literally not your typical podcast. There are so many knowledgeable professionals and talented experts in the world in every field. I'm neither a professional nor an expert in any field. And that's exactly why this podcast has the title it does. I'm Charlene Aminoff, and this is not your typical podcast. Welcome back to another episode of Not Your Typical Podcast. This episode is a very, very atypical podcast, and it is actually dedicated to Lui Nishmat, Miriam, Sarah, Bat Yaakov, Moshe. It should be a tremendous zuchut for the entire family. Amen. I have two very special friends and two very special guests here with me. I'm explaining to you how this came about. The kids are, we were doing a special program for Centers Yeshiva on Eretz Yisrael, which is where my son goes to school, Alex Fletcher's son goes to, to, to Yeshiva, and Shimi Adar's son, Max, is from there as well. So what happened is we're sitting here in the Living Lachaim headquarters at Harvesting Media, and we're just doing this amazing program for Centers, and then we're like, wait a minute, we have so much to talk about. Let's just keep rolling, and we're going to make this an episode on my podcast. Without further ado, I would like to welcome my soul bestie, Shimmy Adar. What's up, everybody? And the most amazing Alex Fletcher. Hey. I love Alex. She wanted to move to Brooklyn. She's bringing out the best in me, Shimmy. Guys, guys you don't understand. <laughs> Alex has her own podcast. She's very refined. She's very structured. She's very by the book. Shimmy and I are not. We're kind of like we float. We and are we going fly. to make so Alex. This is very different for Alex. She's totally out of her comfort zone, but good things always yeah. come when you're out of your comfort zone. I'm game. Zone. I, we were just saying that, like, my podcast with Rifki Sculver, it's Deep Meaningful Conversations. We have it scripted every episode. Like, we know exactly what we're saying when we're saying it. But I'm, I'm ready for this She's, adventure, guys. So, right. Let's you do got this. this. You got this. And Let's also, this. Um, just in full disclosure, we have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> Absolutely not. No <laughs> clue where this is going. We yeah. might end up talking about soup. Oh my yeah. gosh. We will, which, we'll, which, that should be the first question. So actually, yeah, you know why? Fine. <laughs> I love that. I never liked soup until recently. Oh my God. I promise you. Do you, you I drink was, or eat soup? I. Mm. Good question. Do uh, I? Uh. I eat soup. I don't drink soup. I, I, I do it How a little do bit more ladylike. Like. So, do you eat soup? Do you eat cereal? Yeah, that was. Yeah. That was, <laughs> Guys, the name of my podcast is Deep Meaningful Conversations. I'm really, like, really struggling right now. I said I would try, but, like, I don't know, like, a little past my, my comfort it? zone I want right to tell now. you something. Whether you're scripted and, like, following orders or not, the way, guys, I told her before, she delivers anything. She has such a soothing voice. You know the comment? Like, I would listen to you to just calm myself down. I, I, I found myself, like, with the other podcasts that we did before, I'm just like... She's so you, not she. You, you're so are, sweet. No, I promise. I, I, well, just take it, take well, it. Well, listen. People tell us that they listen while they're like folding laundry and they're cooking. We're just like with them, Soothing. right? Isn't it so nice to be with other women, oh like God. while they're living their life, this like is, giving them content to listen right. to? Right. So this is just literally a three ladies who happen to have Baruch Hashem very busy but happening lives. Come together, meeting of the minds, yes. and we're just going to have some fun. And awesome. We're just going to make it exciting for everybody. And that's what I love, because I would have anxiety. If it was like, 
Next question. No, no. no Jim, no. I want to start with you. I'm going to hit you up with something very, Wait, very you wanted random. to say something. Did you, I? No. Okay. <laughs> She's like, Maybe I'm, I'm just rolling anymore. with the punches. Shimmy, yes. give the world. I mean, you are, I, I have to say this. Shimmy is one of my best friends in the whole world. I love you. We are guys, so both. connected. But you are. Oh, we're also, very much alike. We're very I'm similar. a very studdy lady. No, no. We're actually, personality <laughs> wise, we're the same person. We're just. We're just encased in very different bodies and I like different that. styles. Very well put. Same, same neshama, same style, same mm, hashkafa, yeah. same vibes. Just I'm a little bit more um, whatever. I am me and Classy. she's yeah, no, so you're like not even. Gucci. You have to share that story. That you told me. <laughs> yeah, we just had a me. pizza lunch, by the way. I okay. Take it away. Charlene, oh, we're hiding all the food. Yeah, I, I met Charlene last year. She came to Chizik retreat. We have like a Chizik retreat, you know, in Cleveland, and she was our guest speaker. But I've never met you. I'm I admire you from afar. But just to be here, we've been here for hours. Today. Yeah, yeah, we're like <laughs> eating pizza. Just we're so chilling tired. Out. I feel like I know you forever. She she gave me. Such important chizik and guidance over something I was struggling with over lunch. Oh gosh, and it's you. just like, wait, this what is lunch? Awesome. Tell everybody what kind of lunch we had. Oh. They had Caesar salad. Yeah, we had salad. Uh, yeah. I had a margarita <laughs> pizza, mozzarella sticks, Calm french down. fries. I had the pizza too. Cauliflower poppers and nachos smothered in cheese. To add to that, I didn't order coffee because I was late. Hashtag Sparty. Is, yeah. is it? Yeah. I think. Yeah. Be, I, think I was so. here at like quarter to. Yeah, she's yeah. She was here waiting for like three hours. She, she was making us later than we were, you know? I flew here at seven right. in the morning. But uh, anyway, yeah. Th- so thank coffee. Thank you for sharing your, your coffee. coffee. What you were saying about the Gucci story. Oh, yeah. So the Gucci story. I love that story. Please share it with all of us about the belt. Um, or yeah, wasn't no, even Gucci. Uh, See, I'm not really <laughs> my holding. I'm not holding. The first, not the first, like 10th, I don't know, time that we were together. Um, I walk in and we're doing an event for something and um, Charlene, she was wearing this gorgeous belt and I'm like, I didn't know CoverGirl makes belts and she looks at me like, she are you kidding me? It's Gucci. I was like, I don't know, I shop at Walmart. (laughs) So we are very different, but we're actually the same person, just encased in very different bodies. So Shim, tell everybody, because you and I have a very public persona and Baruch Hashem, we, we really try to keep our page positive and light and fluffy, but like with Tochen and with Kedusha. And we really we're really that. both in that we attitude all, of gratitude yeah. with our sunshine and Hodul Hashem's and Nishmat. But one fa- fun fact about you that nobody knows, if you had to say something to shock people, what would that be? I, I, I don't think I could say anything that everyone would be like, whoa, I can't believe that about you. I really think they know. I, I'm scared of heights. I'm scared of the dark. <laughs> I'm scared of snakes. Those are freaky. I once watched somebody tangled up on the way on the road um, in Israel. Hi. Snakes are not my thing anymore. Okay. Um, not that they ever were. It wasn't like, oh my god, I love snakes. You're now scared now. of heights. I feel like it's the opposite. You of your would personality. think, right? Because I'm, I'm like a six, thousand feet tall. Thousand feet tall. I'm petrified. One time, um, when we were in Old Navy, when I was in high school, we went up the escalator that had two floors. And my friends went down and left me there in Old Navy. Oh, no. And I was going to go oh, on no. the elevator because what's the biggie, right? And it was broken. So I had to take the escalator down. And I, when I see an escalator, it goes like, dick, 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 dick. I'm like, oh, so I'm like, what? So I go in. I'm like, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. And this lady's like, girl, are you scared of the escalator? <laughs> and I'm like, yes. I was really like, no, I got this. She's like, you're scared. I'm like, I know. Oh. So she held my hand and we're both like coming down. She's like, don't worry, girl. Wow. And my friends are like, ah. That's so nice. So yeah, I'm afraid of that too. I bet she's a follower of yours now. <laughs> she definitely follows you on Instagram. Oh my God. She's probably like 90. It's been, <laughs> it's been a while. I graduated 2000, guys. I was 99. I graduated 2000. We were all, by yeah. the way, we're all, we're all yeah. the same age. Um, Alex is. Ah, ah, no? Yeah. You're going to say how old I am? Why not? I'm also like that. Who cares? I'm the oldest in the room. Okay, Let's she's the oldest, but now, yes. but now you're going to age yourself. I'm 41. Oh my gosh. I can't believe we're doing this. She's 40. <laughs> I, I just turned 40, December 17. Zos oh, Hanukkah. Yes. Okay, so I can't just say I'm the oldest because then people are going to think I'm like 47. Yeah, she's just a year older than I'm us. I'm just a year older. Okay, so, but Alex, yes. we embrace our age because 42 uh, is the new 30. You're right. No, I'm such a bad role model. Like, I'm ashamed to say my age. Yes. What's wrong with me? I, I, people are like, Shimmy, you share your age? I'm like, yeah, 1982. Sharing. Speaking yes. of which, it's going to go to my next question. Yes. Wait, but you have a child that's engaged and you're the youngest. 
Because that's that, Anna. Because she's a girl. Because yeah, Ellie's a girl. A girl. Okay. You and I, boys. I know. That is true. Yeah. My Jacob is my Jacob is the same age as Yali. That's true. So right, fun. that's true. So no, you have gosh. a couple of years, but it's got the shem and it goes smoothly for everybody Amen. who's writing. And you can be a shimmy and tsar, and you could be dancing in a tutu, and you could still make it through shaduchim. And that's not only like, like, not only that. make it through shaduchim, but end up with the best catch for your child yes, by being yourself. We were actually talking about this yes. before. Yeah, I think we should How, touch upon. I want to touch upon this. Yes, please. How sometimes <clears throat> we might be a little too much for certain people or for certain establishments or walks of life or whatever. But I find that if you're always your genuine self, you will attract your tribe. You will attract the people that will not only love you and accept you, but celebrate you and, and, elevate, and appreciate yes. you. Mm. And so, they exist. They are oh, out there. For you will sure, find them. For sure. We're very into just be yourself. Hashem made you B'Tselem Elohim. We're all made B'Tselem Elohim, but we are all different branches on this gorgeous tree that Hashem created. So just be yourself and be mm. happy about it. I don't know. Yeah, you be know? yourself and do the right thing. And I, I was sharing with them before how, you know, a lady came over to me and she's like, well, your daughter's in, she was like intrigued with my person, persona or whatever. She wasn't hopping what I was doing. And I and she's like, you wear tutus? <laughs> like, you're 40 years old. You, and that's your daughter. She's in Shaduchim. This was like last year. She said, oh, you have to take off the tutu because like your daughter's in Shaduchim. And I'm like, no, no, I'm going to keep the tutu on. And the boy that's going to marry her is going to mm-hmm. love everything about her and everything that she comes along yes, with. Yes, the whole package. Mm. And 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 that's what my daughter, Baruch Hashem, also really believes and believed before. She said that like anybody who comes into our family is not going to like uh, uh, be okay with what my mother does, but appreciate what she does. And anyone out there listening, you know, if you're questioning yourself, as long as you're doing the right thing, keep going because it's the, 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 you're going to attract the right people. Right. How do you know if you're doing the right thing? Like what's your litmus test? Wow, that's good. How do you know? I'll tell you. I, I have a. You go. Should I go first? Yeah, yes, you sir. should always go first. I'm how interviewing you, Charlene yes. today. Oh yes. yeah. I'll tell you how I know I'm doing the right thing. I mean, I don't. I don't. I hope I'm always doing the right thing. I hope I can lie in bed at night and say, Hashem, did I make you proud today? Mm. That's that's my like din cheshbon every single night. I lie in bed, which is usually about four o'clock in the morning mm. after all my factories are closed and I'm getting an hour and a half to two hours of sleep. And I think. Are you serious? Yeah. No, it's not. It's not a joke. Yeah. I sleep. And how do you look so good on two hours? I'm sleep. all smoke and mirrors. How much makeup? <laughs> a great shade to all makeup. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, gel polish nails. Oh, okay, I'm not going to be distracted good. by that. Go yeah. back Everybody to the see her. Up close and personal. <laughs> yeah. She actually looks exactly the same. I love okay, you. they're even more beautiful. You. There I go. love you. So I lie in bed at night yeah. and I think to myself, did I make Hashem happy? Hmm. Did I make Hashem proud? And one of the ways I think about that is, did I help another Jew? Mm. That is my question that I ask myself every single night. Did I do an act of chesed for another Jew today? And if the answer is yes, then I feel like, okay, thank you, Hashem. I, I earned today. I earned it. Mm. And hopefully, Hashem, I earned tomorrow as well. But if I'm trying to think, did I help a fellow Jew? Did I do an act of chesed? Did I make someone smile? You make people smile yeah, on a, you don't even do anything anymore yeah. and your essence makes people smile. I so a hundred percent. So if I, I have to ask myself that question every single night and I found ways that I could almost hack the system to make sure I could answer affirmatively. So if I think, did I do an act of chesed today? Usually within our, my shaitel company with, you know, Gali's Couture Wigs, Baruch Hashem, we're touching so many lives, whether it's somebody covering her hair for the first time or someone who had a really bad shape experience who's coming to me as the edit undo button mm. or a medical client who's getting her wig through insurance for free i'm like okay in that regard i think hashem yes i feel like i did touch someone's life but on a personal level did i if i can't say 100 percent yes then I, I have a few like fill fill what is it called fail safes i will take out my phone and i will either add a little donation to a, a cause, bizchut, someone in need. Like if I know a friend is struggling with shalom bayit or parnasa or in shaduchim with her children or pregnancy, <clears throat> I will make a donation anonymously. Beautiful. Something minor, $18, $36, $26, whatever it is. It's usually a number associated with chai because it's Yeah. And I will make a donation in her zichut or I will take a pair of Tehillim. We have so many ro- rolling Tehillim chats, Loa, unfortunately. And I will just take a block of Tehillim and I'll daven, bizchut that person in need. Then I could say, okay, I did something for someone else. Please, Hashem, let my actions of today grant me a tomorrow. Hmm. So, so you you're, you're, you have your goal in mind when you start your day. 
So, right? So you're looking for opportunities for, to enable you to to fulfill your mission Just and to fulfill to your goal. Almost like I, my only agenda is to be the best that I can be mm-hmm. and to make sure Hashem is proud of me. It's a very easy way to live when you only have one finish line. My right. finish line is, is Hashem happy That's with really me? That's really beautiful. This well, is quite deep. I, yeah, I was we like, were, what we're, we're talking about with soup. This? What happened? How do we, that's right. see what I no, told so you. It was yeah. gonna. It's all gonna come back to me. It's gonna come back to how <laughs> <laughs> my conversation is gonna go. Can I add to the you? I mean, I I don't do everything that you do, but I just I all in terms of a litmus test for myself, I like to ask myself, who are you doing this for? You know, like we're doing that this is for such a good question. Because if it's for someone else, or because we're afraid of how someone else will view us, or for some you know, notion of, I don't know, fitting in or society, then maybe our motives are not 100%. But if it's for Hashem, even if it's for our own avodah Hashem and how we can contribute to Hashem, then we're good. Because I think when, especially, and you can share with me, like when you are more in a public role, it's so easy to fall into the trap of doing things for other people or doing things for non-virtuous reasons. You know, whether it's the likes on social media or the attention, it's just so easy. But like, you just constantly have to be going back to yourself and be like, who, why am I doing this? What are my motives, you know? Yeah, and for me, to keep me grounded, yeah. I learn Bar Hashem with the group, like we call Chillers. ourselves. Yeah, you know Chillers. It, you know Chillers. I go every Wednesday, that's the only thing I do for myself. Huh. The only thing. I, I don't get manicures, clearly, unless I go out <laughs> with, I, with my children right. to spend time with them. Otherwise, I'm not, I'm not, I like you said, for, I mean, it's a beautiful thing. But I, that's my personal. I just don't do it. But chillers. And mm. I look forward to it every single week. And I feel that Wednesday, I'm the most productive. Wow. I, I'm so focused with my Lashon Hara. Wow. With my complimenting. With my Simcha. I'm focused because I learn. And the, like you said, how do you know you're doing the right thing? Yeah. Torah always gets me back. It humbles me. Hmm. To, to, you know, focuses me. Cause you could really, really lose focus. And like, so I would suggest anyone learn and not by yourself only. When you learn with other people, you share your struggles, you share your your tribulations and your successes. And And your pain. And and your pain and you grow together and you inspire each other by the learning, by by your stories. And you're connecting, you're making it relevant. You're showing how the Torah is relevant to each of you. So then you like connect, you're unified through the Torah. And I could read something, we could read something, and you could take something out of it that's totally different. So we learn from each other. So this is Chillers Group Learning Torah? I just called it Chillers because they were like, let's call it, you know, learning... Uh, uh, let's get holy. I'm like, well, no. Yeah. Killer. Well, Chillers is more motivating because it's like, right? oh, I'm going to get like, hey. Chill- so you're literally in person with friends? In per- Well, during COVID, we were yeah. uh, over Zoom. Not the same. Just no. Now. And also this food. Together. Oh, I really for, go for the food. Food <laughs> unifies us all. Can I just say like something that's so important for us as for women is bonding and having. I think you say food. Up. Yep. Well, yep. No, well, especially yeah. over food, but seriously, making time to be with friends and to connect with other women, it is so important. It is so easy for us to be these like martyrs and just like completely focus on our family and our job. But like we need sisterhood. Is and I you think might feel so guilty huge. when you do that. Yeah, right? I know. So. But, Go ahead. No, no, no. Finish this. I want to hear it. Uh, that was there a good was one. There was an article of, of people who go out with their friends once every two weeks yeah. live a longer life. Pro- oh, I was, wow. Probably because you have an outlet. You have this simcha that you're bonding with everybody. And that connection is so, you look forward to it. So you're excited for the next time you get together. Right. Yeah. Of and can I say also, I feel like we forget who we were as single I don't want to say single woman. That sounds funny, but pre as Instagram, people, pre no, I social just media, pre children, pre family. That like, for example, I was just shopping through an international airport. We were in Israel with you know four kids, seven suitcases. It's crazy. It's like cattle herding. And now I flew here, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like I'm by myself. Do you remember what it's like mm-hmm. to be by yourself? And I would say the same thing is like hanging out with friends. Do you remember what like fun and I'm cute just writing notes because you know how my mind is. <laughs> you are when you're hanging out with your friends. You you re- you remind yourself of that side of you, and I think it's so important. This is like not independent of your marriage. You should have that in your marriage too. But like just remember like who that person is because sometimes it can get so bogged down by the routine difficulties of parenting and working. So I think that's why that we we feel good yeah. when we're with I our friends. I actually just watched a video. Of this lady's like, I don't even know who I am anymore. Yeah. I got stuck in the rut of like, not rut, but I don't know, whatever you want to call it, like the, the rhythm of you wake up, you make breakfast with right. the kids, snack, take them to Is school. Is she the one that says she wants to be a tree? 
in the next life because that's hysterical. <laughs> oh, I saw that. <laughs> I saw, I'm like, I want to be treated my next. I was just telling them before I cut you off. I'm so sorry. That's I'm so sitting funny. here. I'm sitting here with my boat with my, both my phones on, and I'm like managing what's going on in my office, managing what's going on overseas, and I'm like, you know what? In my next life, I'm gonna be a stay-at-home mom with no internet and no emails and no and, and flip phone. Hashtag Jasmine. Hashtag Jasmine, my sister. Shout I love you. I love you. I love you. So I have a, I have a real question because yeah. I think the three of us are pretty public figures in the Jewish world. You have a podcast, DMC. You are, you are, you are your own vibe. I'm still trying to figure vibe. out what I'm doing. You are your own vibe. So the world sees a certain side to us mm. and that's the side we show them. What about the side we don't show them? Do you have a side that you don't show? Yeah, so I, I want the world to know that what I show on my Instagram page or on my whatever social, I pretty much only have an Instagram page, it's the curated few moments that I'm showing what's going on in my office. I don't really typically show so much of my kids anymore. And I, I don't like even think people have that realize that it might look like, oh my gosh, you're always on Instagram. Those videos took about a four whole minutes, four, four minutes, minutes, three minutes less, throughout the day. Yeah. Mamash. And, but I've, as I get older, I so, I value a little bit more privacy, mm -hmm. so right. much more. I don't feel the need to show so much that I used to show, that I felt like I used to want to share so much. And now I'm almost like, eh, I'm over it. Right. I'm so like, good. Don't, like, let's say you're at the Kotal, for example, you showed us a video. Right. Don't you almost want to savor that moment and not think, hmm, this would be great content for stories today. Not like, how do you that, figure that so out? So no, when I'm at the Kotal, right, my phone is question. off in my bag. Uh, it is, I'm having a DMC with the Boreola. Right, right. But when I was at the uh, Kotal. Uh, uh, like, Hi, everybody, we are here live. <laughs> <laughs> Comment so, below if you would like to tell us. So oh, so I, I, know, you. I have a crazy cringy. story. So we were just in Eretz Israel because I went for the High Lifeline, for Team Lifeline, Chayenu in Israel. And I was there with my husband alone. It was the first time I went on an international trip without my kids. Super strange, super weird. I have like a, a strong attachment to all my kids. It was really, really hard. But we got there and I was like, oh my gosh, this is my time with Hashem and my husband and my Jacob, of course, whom we went to visit. But I was at the Kotel and my only goal for that trip, I had one list, one bucket list, was to sit by the Kotel, open my Tehillim with Ashrei Ha'ish, Perak Aleph, Pasuk Aleph, and read all the way through Just till Hallelujah, till the end. So I told my husband, now my husband and I, we have this way of communicating at the hotel where I, I, again, my phone is turned off in my bag. I do not want any distractions. But in order to stay connected to him, if he has to go David Mariv or he has to go somewhere, we wear walkie talkies. We're really like, we're really nerdy like that. Oh. So I had my walkie talkie. Meaning that's a hotel walkie talkie yeah. instead of a phone. It's it's vacation walkie talkie. It's like, Roger that. Yeah. I'm going to Mincha. Anytime Love we're going that. on vacation. Because the phone is too distracting. Right? Phone is just, I don't want I don't want to be bothered with so, my phone. I'm just, then, I'm just yeah. imagining Shalita walking down to the hotel with like walkie talkies. <laughs> they think she's security. Yes. Oh so, oh, so yeah. Oh, I have the best story also. So <laughs> I'm with my walkie talkie. And then my husband, so my husband, followers and friends spot. Jonathan, he went to get a falafel and they spotted him. So they're like, oh, where's Charlene? We want to we want to tell her about our Nishmat stories. We want to meet her. And Jonathan was like, okay, okay, come, come with me. So he, he's coming towards the hotel and he's paging me on the walkie-talkie. Char, Char, are you Security done yet? Are four. you done yet? I have a group of girls from a seminary. They really oh. want to see you. And I'm in the zone. I'm like Fine. crying. I'm like davening. And fair. I'm like, uh, uh, uh. And he's like, no, no, honey, just one minute. Just come for one minute. I'm like, uh, uh, uh. And I feel so bad, but I made the girls wait 45 minutes Good. because I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm at 120. I got 15 more minutes to get to the end. I'm a fast reader. I want to do this with Kavana. And then I have to stop and talk to Hashem. And then I got up and then I went and I saw everybody, but I also got pooped on ah. by a bird all if, over if myself. A bird and then you had to you see And then I had to go luck. hug people. So they, they oh. wanted to hug me and I was like, just don't hug my left side because I'm pooped on on my left side, but I'll hug you from my right side and don't touch my phone because there's bird poop all over. Yeah. It's great. They say if a bird poops on you, it's good luck. But I think they just tell it to us because we're to make you poop. feel better. Yeah, yeah. So, I think it's right? just like to cheer you up. By the way, I had that. I I went to um, Camp Ranenu, and I was doing an event. It was sh like right before Shkia, and I was on day thirty-eight. No, Nishmas. you have you ever made it so far? And they, no, no, I know. She tried. I know, day thirty-eight, and, and they're all like, "Kisha." They, the, the lady introduced me. Give it up for Shimmy Adar. And I'm there. Oh my I'm gosh. Like, 
It's not fair. This is uh, this is like breaking my heart. These stories. Did honestly. you say no? Did, I, and and, and my, 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 my my one of my girls like she was holding the series like say Nishma. I'm like, I, yeah. I, I'm like it takes me a long time to say. It. I'm like I can't do it. like sh- they're like screaming my name, shimmy shimmy, and I'm like <laughs> I, I feel like I was like I'm like Hashem. Hashem first. I'm going. No. no. <laughs> 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 I did say. It. <laughs> I'm so sorry for the letdown, but I was like. Hashem, I'm going to take care of your children. I'm yeah, going to be bringing some chat to them. I'm so sorry. Hashem accepts. And I ran to stage. Oh, Hashem that's accepts. Beautiful. Shimmy, I just had a little conversation with Hashem. He says, machulach, machulach, machulach. You're perfect. I was just telling them. I, I, I hear so many women like, I just completed day 40. I'm like, I'm so happy for you. I just messed up day three. <laughs> Yet again. <laughs> Sharon, I want to go back to your original question. So like you, you're really asking how the public persona, like, the ch- any challenges that we have in terms of like our real I don't public know, figures, public figure yeah. versus like what's going on internally. So something else that I do is I have a column in Mishpacha magazine um, and the main magazine, the men's magazine. So I'm the female columnist, but I don't write every every week because that's just too hard. But I write, you know, whenever I have, well. idea, and I have yeah. an idea. Yeah, cool person that's in the cool. house. Well, what's one of the things that I do? She's um, like, flip there. <laughs> no, but I want to share with you the challenge here about this. It's not Instagram. It's not stories, but it's writing. Like me, like writing yeah. to me is That's like, your connection to the people. It's that, and I try to address issues that I think are relevant to readers and like that are on their mind. But I wanna say there is like, probably it's one of the most personal experiences is writing, right? Like you're yeah. expressing- it's very vulnerable. Yes. It's a very vulnerable. You're vulnerable, I, you're expressing your feelings, you're expressing- Your innermost your thoughts. Your innermost yeah. thoughts, what's right. on your mind. And I find this a very interesting experience. So there's the writing and then there's the podcasting, which I'm also sharing my ideas, but you can never say it all, number one. You can never fully express everything you believe, everything you think, everything you feel, nor should you. We have boundaries, we have sinias that guides us, we have social norms. Like I'm not gonna share in Mishpacha Magazine you know, all of my struggles that I'm having or all of my challenges, I'm, you know, we're just not gonna do that. It's not socially some, acceptable. Some people might tell some you. Some people do do that and that's their that. writing style. Right. It's not, that's not me. I find that very challenging where people think they know what I think about something. People think they know my stance on something, but I can never fully tell them express direction. or communicate. And where should I? What, when you're out there- Do you there, feel limited by that? So sometimes, yes, Sometimes, but there's a bigger picture, and I really feel bounded by personal modesty and have a, like certain boundaries of what I'm okay sharing, what I'm not okay sharing. I don't think everyone should wear on their sleeves all of their hashkafic. I don't know if anyone has any struggles or questions. I, I mean, we, we're human beings. Growing people should have questions. Growing people should have struggles. I take ownership of that. I'm proud of that. But I'm not going to share it with you because why should you know that? That's my personal thing it's with me and Hashem and thing, me and Yiddish yeah. guy. I'm not saying that I have struggle struggles, but like anything that we, you know, whatever we have, whatever our issues are, we're all human beings, you know, nothing's perfect. But I just, that's hard. We're sort of like, oh yeah, like she wrote about this topic, so... Did I cover everything? No. Like, and please don't make assumptions about me because you will never know. You'll never know. It, that's very interesting. I don't know. I wonder if that's different in your roles more in terms of social media where you're not thrashing out like a topic that you're writing about. I, yeah. But do you ever feel sometimes like you're not, people S- make judgments about your assumptions about you, about something, and you haven't really been able I, to express I always yourself. Joke, I always joke and I tell people when they meet me, I'm like, I know. I know, I look like a diva. I promise you I'm not. I'm actually very chill. I vouch for that. So I know I always tell people, don't judge my book by my cover. Right. Because I might look a little high maintenance or I might look a little bit standoffish. I promise I'm so chill. Standoffish, Come hug me, come kiss me, tell me you're part of my Nishmat army. Yeah, take a, let's take a selfie together. I love meeting my friends and my followers and my people. And I'm not a diva. I just By the like way, I, I just I, like makeup. Charlene, I think people and, believe that and know that because if that was the case, that they did feel that way, they wouldn't. You wouldn't have. That's correct. So many groups of people wherever yeah. you are, come wanting to come to. They feel that you're approachable. Oh, and that you're nice, and that yeah, you like to look good and and. You're fashionable and you do a very good job. J Lo, step aside, girl. <laughs> Charlene is coming through. But Charlene, you're also so, and I, I don't use this word lightly, and it can be used in a cliche way, but I don't mean that. Like seriously, spiritual, and it I is am. so that I am refreshing. As I feel very refreshed by your presence here today, Shimmy too. I feel like she just has to like, balance. Yeah. I was like, I got to let me make Shimmy feel good. You know, you're like the mom that has to make sure they right. both the children. Child number two yeah. is going to Israel on a stayover flight. 
Well, so many of us are not so in tune with our spirituality, right. with our ruchnias. Right. And it just, you're not trying. That's no. what we love about you. No. It just overflows. And it's a magnet and people connect to it. And what we love is sometimes we have these these images in our mind or judgments that, oh, a ruchniastic woman is going to look a certain way and right. fits in that box. Right. But you but you break all those stereotypes. And that's why we love you. Thank you. <laughs> you can be fashionable yes. and beautiful. And yes. not that they're, I'm saying some people think I, I deal with girls all the time. Like, she me. I want to be tzinias, but I don't want to look nerdy. I'm like, Schlumpy. that's not a contradiction. Right. Right. It's not mutually exclusive. You know, and you're not telling them be tzinias. You're living it. And they're looking like, wow, I could be beautiful. I, I just said that to a lady um, at a kiddush on Shabbos. I'm, I went over there. I'm like, wow, you're beautiful. Aww. You're tzinias. You're fat. You look like you're walking down a runway, but like in the most beautiful, like, and she's like, adhering to the that law. That means so much. Like, right. I, I work so hard on it. Yes. I think there's nothing more beautiful than like a, a, a beautiful woman who is dressed nicely, like right. who Same. doesn't feel the Same. need to show off, but, you know, and, 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 I, I just, I find that so inspiring. I told my husband you know? when I was becoming from, yeah. um, I kept telling my husband, I said, listen, I will never compromise my fashion. I love fashion. I'll never compromise my style. And I'm not a schlumpy person. Like I'm not a casual person. I'm always put together. I'm always, I like, I, I like getting dressed up. I don't have flats. I have one pair of sneakers and they're like designers. So I'm not a very good. I also have one pair of sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> so I told Jonathan when I first started becoming sneakers, I said, I'm going to continue being me, but now I'm going to be adhering 110% mm. to the laws of sneers in terms of dress. Mm -hmm. So collarbones, elbows, knees, tights, the whole nine yards. So just disregard credit card charges for a while because I got to <laughs> rebuild a new wardrobe. Uh, a, a, a week ago, he goes to me, he's like, are we past that point of disregarding? Right. Like, are we and done yet? Just like, and like, but John is coming. One yes. second, yes. check out, yes. and now I'm done for now. You know? <laughs> and now I'm done. Seven so. years later, <laughs> and now I'm done. <laughs> we're never done. I'm always evolving. I think we're always evolving. Even yeah. me, I, I, I'm going to touch upon this just like so. It's a topic that a lot of people have strong feelings towards, but as a Shetelmacher, I choose to wear a shetel mm. that is a shetel with bangs mm. for a number of reasons. Number one. Always? I have a long forehead. Mm. I have a long forehead. It's beautiful. I don't look good in lace fronts oh. or lace tops, but also because I find that I want to look like a married woman. Mm. I want, I want, me. Right. But if someone else wants to wear the most gorgeous, current, cool thing, Gesundheit, hate serve Hashem how you want to serve Hashem. You know, be you. Be proud to serve Hashem the way you want to. My comfort zone happens to be bangs. It's also great when you don't have time to get your eyebrows done for like uh. three months. And you know, but I also, with each person in their own growth, with their own journey in Yiddishkeit, as long as you're always marching forward in your own way towards Hashem, disregard the noise around you. Mm. So, like, remember, I think I spoke about this. I spoke about this in... The Chizik, at the Chizik, Chizik mission, mm -hmm. I spoke about how in 2016. Go Cleveland. Yeah, Chizik, Cleveland. Chizik retreat, part of the Chizik mission. Yes. Our annual retreat. So I was so honored to be a guest there a year or two last ago, year. Last, last year. year. And I spoke about serving Hashem in your own lane. Mm, I love that. And I gave this example of in the 2016 Rio Olympics, Michael Phelps was running, I think, a 200 meter butterfly or a relay race or a relay. Swimming. Yes, swimming. Michael Phelps was swimming. He was swimming for Team USA. I love and the, uh, the the person he was running against the closest was, I forgot his name. I will find uh, out. The second that, that's I, the, the worst second part. End. You could lose by 0.8, like nothing. Right? Michael Phelps. I have no clue who you are. Yeah, <laughs> right. so right. So I think he's from Costa Rica. I'm not sure Costa Rica or wherever he was from. He was swimming against Michael Phelps. And at one point, the opponent took the lead. And everybody was like, wow, big news. Michael Phelps, the biggest upset in Olympic history. And then, then, then the opponent got wind that he took the lead. So he started to look over mm. to see where Michael Phelps is holding. And in that process, he slowed himself down. Mm. The final tap against the wall, Michael Phelps won gold. The opponent won silver. Why? Because the opponent couldn't stop looking in the other lane. That's Same not how business. we're going to achieve gold. That's not. Mm. And I don't want silver. Mm. 
Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what are your thoughts? Shimmy, you have so many amazing insights of life. Um, Everything about you is sunshine and positivity. Tell right. us something that's on your mind. Well, no, I, I, just a, a story that popped to mind um, while you were sharing that is also when we look at other people, like also the idea of staying in your lane, but not judging. And when you stay in your lane, and you're focused on yourself, you don't have time to think about her and yeah, she and what yeah. bad she's doing. If we took all that time that we focus on other people's negativity and, and what they need to work on and we channel it to ourselves, can you imagine what we would be? Mm, yeah. So one, I, I do uh, different kinds of events and one specific one was a Kirov event and it was a Shabbos, uh, Shabbaton. And girls were walking in and one girl came in with a jean skirt and somebody there, Came, come, came over to me and she whispered, she's like, at least on Shabbos, she did, she could not wear a jean skirt. And I'm, I looked at her, I'm like, Oy. are you kidding me? Yeah. Mm. Baruch Hashem, she's, like she's wearing, she's wearing a, skirt. a skirt, that's her journey. And like, that's her respect for Shabbos. That's her, you know. And for her, get, that was a win. Yeah. That was an accomplishment. That was a win. Nobody and, knows. When you but, start judging, you have no idea what people's journeys are. And like, she was looking at her like, come on, at least for Shabbos. But she was like, this is my Shabbos skirt. So, hmm. and you know, after Shabbos, she came over to me and she's like, wow, I was so off because they were sharing their stories and their struggles. Wow. We could all, if we could, as we, you know, go about our day, we're gonna always see certain stories and things that are going on, take a step back and say, let me focus on myself. Oh, hmm. yes. That's oh, a yes. huge story. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's huge that that person acknowledged that and recognized yeah. that she made a mistake. Yeah. That's impressive. I mean, you cannot after hearing people's like struggles and- yeah. Wow. Taking a little break from the podcast just to say that I'm so honored to be a part of this incredible event that's happening. It's called Zos Hatora. It is Liloy Nishmat, everybody's beloved Rabbi Wallerstein, Sechert Tzadik Lebracha. And I just, I, I think the world needs to know about my personal Kesher with Rabbi Wallerstein, uh, which is why I'm so honored to be a part of this. So, First of all, Zos HaTora is a, it's continuing Rabbi Wallerstein's incredible legacy. It is continuing on his mission. You know, Ornava is going to continue, unfortunately, without the captain of that ship. But we need to keep his legacy alive and we need to keep Ornava going. It's not just Ornava, it's the ranch, it's um, the seminaries, it's BCA. And Rabbi Wallerstein's impact was so tremendous that I wasn't even a student in any way. I was just a fan, and I remember I was expecting number two. I was pregnant with my second, and Jonathan and I, we were in Miami, and we heard that Rabbi Wallerstein is speaking at the Eden Rock for some, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was for High Lifeline. So it was Friday night, it was Shabbat, so Jonathan and I walked over from our apartment in Miami to the Eden Rock, and we were sitting and listening to Rabbi Wallerstein speak, and I was expecting at the time, and when when he finished speaking, we were both mesmerized by everything he said and, and the way he said it and how he was so, so cool, but such a giant of a person with his Torah. He was a gaon with his knowledge in Torah, but he was like a buddy to everybody in the, in the world. And Jonathan and I went over to Rabbi Wallerstein and we, you know, we introduced ourselves and we spoke and, this is way before I became from, this is way before the Gali drowning incident. It was, it was thinking it's probably in 2004 or five. No, 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 six, 2006. And as soon as we walked away from that lecture, I love you, thank you. As soon as we walked away, I looked at Jonathan and I said, what if I name this one Zachary? If I have a boy, what if we name it Zacharia? Because my father, in, by Sephardim, we name after the living, and it's actually a big zechut to give, to take somebody's name. It's supposed to bring them a lot of bracha. And my father's Hebrew name is Hanukkah, so I knew that I was obligated to take the name Hanukkah. And I said, Zacharia Hanukkah has such a beautiful flow. And Jonathan said, yeah, I love that. And we decided that if I'm having a boy, I'm going to name him Zachary, Zacharia, because Rabbi Wallerstein was so phenomenal and he embodied and encompassed every single mida that I wanted my child to have. And as soon as we saw that this campaign 
was live and was going on, Louis Nishmat Rabbi Wallerstein, I said, oh, I need to be a part of this because I want the world to know that Rabbi Wallerstein did play a very big role in my life without even really knowing it. But then after Gali's incident that turned me from, Rabbi Wallerstein invited me to come to an Ornava Shabbaton and to speak for Ornava. Rabbi Wallerstein himself sat in the men's section in the back of my lecture and getting emotional. He listened to my lecture from beginning to end and he was wiping his tears along with all the women and he was so, so humble. He was so tremendous, but he was so easy to connect to and easy to relate to and he did not think anything of himself. And I was so honored that Rabbi Wallerstein sat and listened to Gali's nace. And afterwards he came and he just, he didn't know what to do with himself. He wanted to meet Gali, he wanted to get a bracha from Gali. And I just, this tzaddik built an unparalleled legacy. I can't even imagine the number of tens of tens or hundreds or th tens of thousands of women who are doing mitzvot because of Rabbi Wallerstein. And Rabbi Wallerstein probably didn't even realize it. It was just the way he was. And it was the way he brought so much love and energy and achdut. And in fact, I owe so much to Ornava because I met some of my best friends from from that Ornava Shabbaton. Shout out to Jackie Vitone and Avit, Avivit Michli. I love you both so much. So... This Zota Torah campaign is something that is going to just bring so much, so much to the world, so much that belongs in the world, even though Rabbi Wallerstein is gone. So if you would like to be a part of this, head over to zoshatorah.org. You can actually buy a letter for the Sefer Torah that is being written by Elohim Nishmat Rabbi Wallerstein for just $36 a letter. But at the same time, this program is, not, is much more than just a Sefer Torah dedication. It's 24 hours of inspiration. It's going to be featuring so many dozens of inspirational, beautiful speakers, a documentary that has been in the works from the time of his passing, as well as le letters written by a sofer live with you as a sponsor. So please head over to zoshatorah.org, get involved, open your hearts, help everybody keep the Ornava system running, and let us keep Rabbi Wallerstein's legacy alive. To veer onto a different topic, but also circling back to the original topic um, regarding what we want to show and what we don't want to show, what I've discovered has been very, very helpful in really separating my public figure life and my home life is when I am home and with my kids, my Drop phones the phone. are off. Phones. Upstairs, phones, <laughs> plural, are off. Plugged in Fault. upstairs on my nightstand, and my children are my only mm. primary focus. And if you ask my kids, some someone wants actually somebody. We're not going to say kids, who. We're not going to say who. <laughs> Tell me details. I want everything. Someone <laughs> approached my daughter Gali, and said to her something along the lines of, "How does it make you feel that your mom is a public figure? Hmm. What does it feel like?" Are, do you feel neglected? Oh. Are you like, are you lacking? To, does she give you time? Does she give you attention? And Gali was like, my mom? My mom has all the time in the world for me. What are you like? What, my, do you know who my mom is? Like she, she was so confused by the question. You're talking about mama? Yeah. I think you guys are wrong, lady. <laughs> she was, and I Hashem, thank you Hashem. I feel like when I'm with my kids, they know that they're number one, mm. number two and number 10. And it's, there's no in between, but it's so sad that like to the outside world, they'll actually, someone actually had the cuts. And the she had no clue that you're putting your go, phone away yes, to when you're with your children. Like, are you okay with the, are you okay with your mom being, you know, Charlene Aminoff? Is it okay with you? And she's like, Oh, yes, yeah, so cool. Right. Like a hundred you know? years ago, a lady came over to me at a pizza store. I was with the kids. She's like, Shimmy, do you know your children's names? No <laughs> way. Did she really? <laughs> I'm like, Shimmy, was she joking? Yerucham? Yeah. Is that you? <laughs> oh, sorry. What's your name? Ariel. Yeah, his name's Ariel. 
<laughs> but you know what? They don't realize that about us. That, okay, Baruch Hashem, we could be boss ladies, CEOs, hustling, flying from one end to another. I know Shimi has a crazy um, thing coming up where you're going to be in Israel for like 20 hours. 20 and hours. then in Florida the next morning. Do what you got to do. But your kids are bleeding, are the happiest, mm-hmm. most well taken care of, most nurtured of you, children in the world. But I, I, right? I, I, I could only do what I do because of my husband, Danielle, and my children. Yes. And not only are they proud of it, they encourage me mm. and help me and motivate me to be the best that I could be. Because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to do it. See, nobody knows this, and this is the part that I'm struggling with with your story, is that who do, who do we think we are that we can say this to people? You it's know nothing stuff. about people's lives. The more we can learn about other people and then respect other people, the less we're going to judge them because we're just going to have more understanding and insight. It, it, it pains me, honestly. And it sounds yeah. great that your daughter also just had the confidence to respond appropriately yeah, to her. she was like, what? Yeah. That's the funnest thing ever. Baruch Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. But I also, one, th- one thing, I have to say one thing that really rubs me the wrong way. And I've oh, ladies. never, yeah, fun fact. Get ready like, for this one. I've never, ever, ever talked about this before. Really? Oh. Never. I've never oh my God. This you heard it here first. In my life. When I, Baruch Hashem, I really rarely, I, I think in the 12 years that my life has been more public since Gali's drowning and since we became from and with social media and everything. By the way, as you're speaking about this very serious, <clears throat> I don't know what, what's about to go down. Yeah. But the sun is going down with oh. us. It's like such a vibe. Wait, what time is she we, at? We, I got we, a okay, fine. As long as I say, I say mincha. Fine. So, I, this really bothers me that when someone doesn't know you yeah. and doesn't know the slightest thing about you, they're just like a follower from behind a screen, for them to send an unkind message, and I don't get them often, but I did get but one this do. week. I got oh, one really? this week, and it was the first one I had I gotten huh. about seven years. Wow. But it but was that's enough. It, hurt so much it was more. enough to to put me in so much pain. Oh my gosh! And the message was something along the lines of like, whatever, something about the the way you whatever. It was just commenting. We just threw a big fancy fiftieth birthday party for my husband in Florida at our favorite restaurant, Fuego. Shout out to my. Fuego Go fam, Fuego. Avi and Mark, we love you guys. And I flew down all the Hatzala guys. Book now for your now. 70th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, book now for, for next 25 years break, from now. They're probably already booked for Yeshiva <laughs> break next year. So someone, so we put, you know, the, the party was a celebration of this tzaddik, this mensch who founded great next division of Hatzala. And it was, he was surrounded by his recruited fellows, his recruited brothers. And it was such a beautiful celebration. And I, I like to share these things because first of all, I'm celebrating him. Right. I'm celebrating the, the Hatzala guys that they had a really challenging year and they were so happy to get away for 19 hours wow. to just celebrate. And somebody sent me a message. I didn't even respond to her, but she sent me a message of, how do you think it makes other people feel when you're posting this outlandish, fancy mm. party at Fuego and you're flying to Israel and you this and that. And I thought for a second, I was Wait, like, and then what? And She she put and, me down. Right. She put me down and like in a very, very mean way. She, it, it continued. Hiding behind the screen. Because social media yeah, is where yeah, this and gets and really And the hard. username was like... Cupcake49 right. underscore no, no, no. sprinkles. Yeah, yes. <laughs> user <laughs> underscore 553297. <laughs> and it was just like... <sighs> and I was... I was about to give a sheer, and I got this message, and it- That's when it happens right before you gotta go. It hurt my neshama, because I wanted to say, do you walk into someone's home and critique them about the way they have their decor? No. Would you walk, I bring people into my life, I share, because I like to share, and I like to make simcha, and I like to put a happy place. Do you, how could you criticize someone? You can't sleep in bed that night and ask Hashem, are you happy with the way I conducted myself today? Mm-hmm. That answer is no. Mm-hmm. So you hurt, she hurt you. She hurt me. And, and, and I forgive, I 100%, I, I hold nothing back. But but now you have to work so much harder to be happy to, like that takes space up in your brain. Oh, yes. Uh, and, and me, somebody who really tries to be positive, it you have to work yeah. so much harder, but I guess it's a gift from Hashem because it's not a bad day, it's a character building day. For sure. So now it'd be much easier if your day went well and everyone was like, I love you, Charlene, you're amazing. What dish did you mm. get? Da, 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 da. Yeah. See when, yeah, so I don't know. See when you're in the but public. But I dive in though, by the way, I yeah. dive in. I did not respond. Uh-huh. I saw it. Thank you, Hashem. My team is, uh, my team sees the messages. One of one of my girls immediately deleted the message so I can't even respond. Oh, I can't God. even see the full gamut of how oh, wow. horrible she was. But I dive in right then. And I said, Hashem, please bless me that I should never 
ever hurt mm. a fellow Jew, not with my actions, right. not with and my not, words. Not on, not on purpose. And not, 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 not by dafka and not by accident. Yeah. But, then, yeah, but, and, but you spread so much positivity. I'm sure that hurts but you even, so deep. Even, yeah, that, right? that's the thing. When you work so hard to uplift people, I'm really, I try to do it in a very genuine way. You know what I'm saying? I, I'll give you a compliment, but it'll be a real compliment. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you have the most beautiful nose. And it's not, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to be like, you have, you know, a beautiful button on that shirt. <laughs> Where did you get that button? Um, but when you try so hard and it happens to you, it hurts you more than you can ever imagine right. because it's like, what? Like Your I intentions go, are pure. You're not, yes. you know, that's the hardest part. Like, <sighs> right. I should have inadvertently hurt someone right, right, or, right. or made other people feel bad or right. made other people feel that envious. I believe or that like, comes, like, comes from people's insecurities. I, I want to It's very triggering. Yeah. One thing, people. I had a Sunday program and the first year, uh, dismissal was difficult, whatever. It was a new Sunday program. Second year, first day, dismissal was amazing. We had over 300 kids. Everything went smoothly, carpool and, and the program. and Everyone was so happy. And I stand outside in the freezing cold try to get everyone a hug, or if they don't want a hug, high five, you know? But I try to make every single girl feel I like I love you, because it's not like I love you, I do love you, and I, that's why I wouldn't be standing here in a negative 40 greeting you on a Sunday morning. I remember watching you do that and all day. Yeah, it was, oh, but I came home and I was like, wow, today's a good day. Everything was like, we rocked the show. Yeah. And then I got a message. Shimmy, my niece came to your program. She loved it, she had such a good day. She had the best Sunday program. But she said, you didn't say good morning to her. Oi. Oh. She was probably one of the girls that came with like a ship right. and a 40 Oy. kids and they all ran in. And I'm like. And that killed you. Ugh. The thousand other, the 38,600 other people. But you it against her. Why does she need to share that with you? Do That's you feel a different that was okay? story. I know. Okay. That's I know. different. I, I, see, I, I can't change people. Uh -huh, I could uh -huh. only change myself. Oh, wow. And that's I, a that's a mic drop moment. That's I mean, for, for, uh, for that, obviously, we know that we we all know we yeah, all heard that. Obviously. But for you to apply that yes, to this so situation beautiful. is huge. You but know, I, yeah. I, and I, I have to tell myself I could only do what I could do. Right. I'm a human, wow. and I went above and beyond. And if that happens through the cracks, it's just. Capara. Capara, capara. <laughs> but you know what they say, hurt people hurt yes, people. Yes, yeah. So if someone yeah. can bring themselves to send an unkind message, mm, they must be in hurt. so much pain yes. in their own life that the only way they can feel better mm -hmm. is by, by, by bringing way, someone else down. I was once at like, I don't remember, a Dunkin' Donuts or whatever, and the person was nasty shit, but nasty. And usually, <laughs> I'm good. Like the nastier you are, the more love yeah. I'm gonna give yeah, you. Yeah, You're yeah, not gonna yeah, do yeah. it. You don't know what to do with all the kindness. They want to punch me in the face, oh right? My gosh. But one time, I was not in a good mood. Yeah. Like I was having the. You're mood. allowed. And I'm <laughs> allowed, <laughs> right? Old, yeah. Right. I was like, "Shimmy, how are you always so happy?" I'm like, "No, no, no. See me in the morning. <laughs> I'll be like, you're not. You're gonna be like, really? You're the shimmy happy bastard. <laughs> you could have fooled me." And this person was really like, "Oh," and on top of everything that I was going through, I was just like. Yeah, well, hurt people hurt. Yes. <laughs> and then I realized the only reason why I said that is you were hurting. Because you, you were hurting. hurting. And how you did they hurting. respond? Uh, <laughs> like, a, lady, crazy they're like, lady. They're like, yeah, well, your coffee? I spat in it. <laughs> L'chaim. But this goes back. L'chaim. L'chaim. <laughs> No, this goes back to being in the public sphere. We're more prone to criticism. Right. People think you're public property and they can tell you they don't like that color tutu that you're wearing. Yeah. And they can tell By you. By the way, you, you mess with my tutu, I will cry myself. Okay. To <laughs> Anything but the tutu. That's you know the name what? Of our I, podcast. Anything but the tutu. <laughs> I, you don't, I fall for my tutu. I got so many, like, it doesn't pass for a boss Israel. Right. Oy. It's too colorful. It's too poofy. You I'm like, started I'm that tutu trend, yeah, by the way. Yeah, you did. Like, Bay <laughs> production is not production without tutus. 100%. Right? No, I'm set with you. But the first time I wore it, I'm not kidding you. I tell this to everybody. I'm like, this lady came over to me. She's like, Shimmy, did you look at yourself in the mirror? You look like a big, <laughs> fat mushroom. I'm like, <laughs> and I remember telling my husband, I'm like, maybe I should take off my tutu. And he's like, no, this is what you love. You rock out that tutu. And I'm like, you know what? The second I put it on, I, I changed my mindset because I love tutus. I don't care what you think. I said, watch, it's going to be the hottest Trending. thing in the world. It, it went was. viral. And, totally. and thank you. Yeah. And, and, no, but like the, the long, nerdy ones. 
The short uh, ones used to be cool. I was like, now I want to make my titty really titty. It's very serious. Four <laughs> it inches below knees. the knee, too, too. It covers well, her knees. Well, not my knees, because I'm five, seven thousand feet tall. Yeah, she's a giant. <laughs> really? Should. And you know what? After her hip replacement her hip replacement yeah. surgery, she grew even more. <laughs> really? What happened? Any, anytime people see me in real life, they're like, whoa. We didn't and, and know I get, you were that I, tall. And I get the exact oh, opposite. Yeah. Like, people meet me in real life, they're like, you're really short. I'm like, yeah, I am really, really short. I know. I have a picture of, with you from the last year's Chazuk Retreat, and I'm like, I am huge. You're not. I'm, I'm totally you. I'm don't five, share your, your, your age. I don't mind sharing my height. Your height. I will not share my weight. But I am 5'6". You're 5'6". Really. And you're that's five, pretty tall. 5'9", going on 6'3". Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> going on 6'3". 5'9", really? I have n- I, the last time I checked, 5'8 and a half. Wow, no, you're taller than I don't than know. That. I don't you're know. way taller. I'm not even, guys, I'm like 5 and a quarter. Wow. I, my my driver's license is five two, wow. but I'm there five and a quarter. But you're huge. Yeah, you know my husband says everything else. So totally. Jonathan was once like, um, we're very our height difference is crazy. He's six two. I'm five <gasps> feet tall. So I always make a joke that I because all the short I feel no not all but a lot really of my short petite friends, friends married really not, tall yes, friends. I'm yes. like oh, so that means I'm for sure gonna marry the like shortest guy. He's not so short, but before I got married, I was like, I'm gonna marry such a short guy that we're gonna be at the couple and be like, would you take this man to me? And I'm gonna be like, yes, come here. Come here. <laughs> But fun times, <laughs> fun times, fun times. She needs but a podcast. She totally. That's what they so tell me always. A podcast. Totally. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, like, it'll come out like once every four months. <laughs> once every four years. Who are you once kidding? Every four once every four months, as if you have time. Breaking news: Shimmy made it to the podcast b- business office. So Jonathan didn't even realize I was short. Isn't that wow. funny? What He's do you mean? Like, what does that mean? He didn't realize what, the first time when we were engaged. Somebody was like, you, "Wow, the height difference is so cute." And he looked at me, and he had this aha moment. He's like, "Oh." Yeah, you're really. Yeah, petite. he's like, wait, where are you, and Charlene? Like, you didn't, you didn't know how. To, you guys like, were both like hot. on cloud nine dating. Like, like, no one knows. But he said the nicest thing. He's like, you might be like technically the shortest woman I've ever dated, but wow. you're, the, but you're the tallest person I know. Oh, that's so oh. nice, Jonathan. <laughs> nicely played. Jonathan, you're such a good one. <laughs> nicely played. Shem, 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 bless you with health and happiness and shmira and brach and shefa on twenty years. Hashtag fifty. Um, the hashtag big fifty. 50 the big five zero. Oh. So, girls, do you know how long we've been speaking? Just out of um, curiosity. No, I guess. Just take a guess. Wait, we didn't ever finish talking about soup, though. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? We have yes. to go back to soup. with soup. <laughs> and you never know where it's going to end. You never know where it's going to take you. So, we've been already schmoozing for about 46, 47 minutes. Nice, nice. Mind blown. Yeah, crazy. Nice. Right? So, okay, so now let's bring some tochen to this crazy, awesome conversation. I thought, I thought, I thought we actually we did. did. That, was, that was. It really was tochen. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Parting words. Yeah, parting words. Tochen. Parting words. Alex, yeah. a message, if you could change something about the world hmm. to make it a more positive, pleasant, sunny place, what yeah. would you change? I hope I get the same question, because if you're going to ask yeah, me, no, I'm it is. It is, it is. I'm put on the spot. All three of us, yeah, nope, yeah, yeah, all three yeah, of us, yeah, yeah. so start thinking about your answer, but we're going to ask you okay. first. You're the deep That's deep why one. I did very well in school. <laughs> okay, uh, let me ask you a question. See, oh, that's such a, the oh, that's such a politi- politician way. I'm going to answer you yes. with a question. Ask you. Yeah, go ahead, ask me. I really am curious if you're talking about the from world or you're talking about the world at large. Uh, either. Either? I don't think it needs to be the from world. I mean, in general, some or, or you could choose yours yeah. to be the, the from world, whatever you want. I don't know why I'm feeling this right now, but social media is scaring me lately. Twitter. I'm sure Jakob Linger can, can attest to that, is scaring me lately. I think people are so, like we talked a little bit before, like so quick to judge, so quick to condemn, oh, and looking so to quick cancel. to cancel. Oh, that's it. Everyone yes. wants to cancel for and, no reason. And these are such toxic things and so opposite of obvious astrology and so opposite of what we value as Jewish people. And so opposite of what's going to rebuild our third Beit HaMikdash. Exactly. Our basic core values. And when we bring that into our Yiddishkeit, okay, they do not belong. And it breaks people down. As human beings, we just want acceptance, right? Like, you're all about love and you're all about love. Like, that's what we crave. And pizza. (laughs) And pizza. (laughs) And carbs. (laughs) And coffee. Um, And I feel that all of those, the canceling and the judgment and the condemning breaks down our humanity. And the more we're online and engaging in those, you gave an example of that, engaging in those behaviors, the more we're breaking us down as human beings and we're breaking down our Yiddishkeit, we're breaking down our relationship with Hashem, we're breaking down our neshama and it pains me. And you know, like we may have friends or stories of people that were really hurt, you know, and 
and and are from world because of judgment and because of you know condemning others and because of canceling and we cannot let that happen in our world and for those of us who are on social media like stay far far away from that kind of rhetoric shut the phone down put it away if you want to engage in one of those fights and debates and where you think things are going to get ugly there's someone alive on the other end of the screen and it's going to impact them so there's a saying never engage with a terrorist Uh, well yes you never engage with a terrorist yeah if somebody wants to start a fight with you just don't and can I just say, like, just like you said, putting those phones upstairs, why is it so hard to do that? Don't we want to be oh, with our children? There is something nah. hard, like hugely difficult, yes, yes. almost like like, like a heroic act. Herculean of, effort. Yeah. Herculean effort, yep. thank you, of t- t- turning that off and putting it away. And the same thing goes with engagement on social media. There's something we just, we're like, oh, but we just have to say something. We just have to respond. No, no, you really don't. Like, it's okay. No one will remember. Yeah, I, I want to add away. to that. The, I started this initiative called yeah, Drop, Drop the, the Phone. phone. And mm. I wanted to give a good wording for that so that you could remember. Oh, Ima, drop the phone, drop the phone. I when the Sunday program that I was I was doing, um, every week we had a different theme. And one week this girl was dressed in this cutest themed outfit. I don't want to say, I, I guess I could. No, I don't want to say. Okay, but whatever it was, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love your your outfit. I'm calling your mother to give her a nachas report, and she's like, don't bother calling her, just message her on Instagram because that's where she's at all day. Oh. And at that moment, I I was like, whoa, what do I? I could either be like, Ay, Nabach, this is our this is our generation, or I could be like, I gotta do something about it. And I, I remember making a video, I'm like, guys, I'm in it with you. It's okay, you wanna be on social media, you wanna share. But at least, I'm not, I'm not asking for the whole time, I'm asking for one hour. Cause one hour of complete focus and being present is the greatest present you can hmm. give. Cause now what happens is when we don't have that hour and that hour, you get it farther and farther and farther apart where moments that you could have had to yes. connect and to really get close to your children, your spouse, your friends. And you get to a point where it's like, I don't even have to, I don't even know how to connect with you anymore. I don't even know how to have eye contact with you. I can't yes. even. Here's the saddest part. I don't even want to because what's in front of me is more entertaining and more attractive. And that yes. is what's frightening. And that is why when I say, yeah. I'm like, drop the phone, put it like Charlene said, in another room, out of sight, out of mind. Because if it's here, yeah, no. and I'm with my friend, I'm my, like, I, I'm listening, but, but you're I, like, I, I'm thinking, over. I'm like, oh, am I missing an email? Did right. it, yes. Uh, but, studies, ding, ding. but studies show that it's not you, it's our human brain yes. that cannot resist this. Right. Okay, it, it impacts attention. And when you are empowered to know about the science behind what our brain is doing when it sees a device, I think that actually, I think it's empowering. I think that we need to learn more about that because then we can fight it. Right. And be more aware. So Shim, the same question I asked Alex for you as we wind down this amazing power hour. If you were to put something out into the world to make the world a better place and or if you were to give advice to people who are listening about how to make more sunshine in the world, how to make the world a slightly more shimmy friendly place with more positivity and and light, Um, what would you say? What would you like to see a change you would like to see in the world? Shimmy is the change in the world. Shimmy <laughs> is. Shimmy Be the change. My friend got me a big poster. Yeah, seriously. Be the change you wish to see yeah, in the world. That's you. Really don't underestimate the power that you have as a person, whether you're a child, a teen, adult, or you're, you're older. And people are like, I, I get messages all the time. I'm like 60, I'm 70 years old. I feel like, I'm like, it's never too late to make a difference in your life and someone else's life. Hmm. I, I want to share with anybody who's going through a hardship right now. Um, we went to, I think, Vermont and we were going through, it was like snowing and uh, like it was a horrible weather. And then we got into a tunnel and in the tunnel was light throughout, like really shining light. And so often we say like, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Hold on tight. You got this because it's going to be light at the end of the tunnel. But sometimes that's way too intense and I can't wait till the tunnel, like the tunnel might be so long and I'm like, I just don't have the energy. There's light in the tunnel right. and try to look for it. Try to surround yourself with people who bring light to you and are gonna motivate you and encourage you and lift you up and bring that light that you can't f- figure out in your own. Like you just don't, don't have the energy. Surround yourself with good people. People are gonna do just that. Create sunshine even in the tunnel and when there is no sunshine in the world, not only in your life, there's no sunshine, it's hard times for so many people. 
be the sunshine, create the sunshine. I always say this, be the reason someone smiles. Like, Jimmy, enough with her, be the reason someone no, smiles, right? it's so true. It's such a simple thing. Your smile could change the world. Your one kind word, one kind gesture. You have no idea what that could do for somebody. So don't underestimate the power that you have. And it's Hashem, just more kindness. Amen. And the more yeah, smiles. Exactly right. When you give, you, you get. get. And, and that's new. Well, Vinat Vinat Nu. Nu. The palindrome. Vinat yeah. Nu is a palindrome. It's spelled the same way forwards as it is backwards. Uh, she, she looked at me, she's like, palindrome. Which means palindrome. this. <laughs> which, yeah, yeah. which means, Hashem, it's a remez. Hashem is saying to us, if you give to my child in need, I will give to you. Yeah. And there's no better source to receive from than hmm. And I want to add to that, that like people say, Shibi, what do you do when you don't, you're not feeling right. energetic? What do you do? Or you're down or you really go, I'm like, I go and I give. Hmm. They're, they're like, right. I don't understand. You first have to fill up your bucket. Right. And then you give. How, how could you give when you have nothing? I'm like, then you don't understand what giving is. Oh, beautiful. Because when you're giving, I go, I visit a sick patient when sometimes I'm not really doing the best. I leave there filled. Totally. Nothing else in the world could fill me more than the, the act of giving. So when you give, you get. Beautiful. That's exactly right. I Shimi stole my words. I was going to actually I'm so close. Sorry. No, no, it just goes to show how in sync we are yes. with our neshamas. But you yeah. have to answer your own so question. I'm going to answer my own question. Now you got to Charlene shit. I'm going to charlene fi it. charlene fi that's a that's great a charlene word. charlene fi it. I know. It's a great one, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you. So I was going to say the same thing. I was going to close with the Vinat Nu example of saying how when we give to others in any capacity, whether it's of our time, of our chizuk, of our smile, of our positivity, we're changing, we're changing their day, we're changing their life, we're changing the course of whatever journey they're on. So sometimes the person that's the hardest to give love to is the one that needs to see it the most. So I feel like when you find someone in your life that is a little bit challenging or is challenged, mm. Focus a little extra koach on that person. For, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you an example. Um, I have a friend who's going through a very, very hard time, but I know that if my phone rings and it's her, it's going to be a lengthy, hard, depleting conversation because it's it's going to get deep. And at first, I was like, I don't have time for this right now. I have so much, I have to run. I'm this, and then I was like, wait, she's in a funk. I could pull her out of her funk by just giving her just an ear just to listen, listening. just to listen to right. her, vent or cry about whatever it is, whether it was about her marriage or Parnassa or whatever's happening. And let me tell you something. I found that the more I helped her, really, the more peace I found with so many other things. And I think just that the concept of Vinatnu, give to someone else, whether it's, like I said, saying Tehillim for them, making a tzedakah a donation in their zuchut, or smiling at them, or inviting them over, having a cup of coffee with them, get a smile, at, letting them pass in front of you at line at Gourmet Glad or at Everfresh. Right. Or, okay. you know, it's just, it feels so nice to give to somebody else. And I do believe that when we, when we have Hashem, when we say Hashem, this is hard for me, but I'm gonna give to them and I, I will gladly accept from you. But talking also, <laughs> yeah. But, Every time but, like, what, 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 what? It's like, I'll go first this time. You say it, you say it. So a lot of times we give for our own satisfactory right. feeling. Like, I, I feel better about myself because I gave you. So like, let's say you hold the door for, open for someone, which happens all the time. I hold it open and they just walk through. I'm like, hey, where's welcome. my thank you? <laughs> and I'm like, why did I hold the door? So they could say thank you. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and right. I'm let down. I'm like, right. say thank you. It's, it's. Take yourself out of the equation when you're yourself, doing chesed. I'm doing chesed mm -hmm. for, for shame, you right, right now. And if I don't get what I expected, it, because it's not, it's not about me also. It's also about the other person. Chesed is give what they need. They need the door open for them right now. 100%. Not that you need your, you know? And I, yeah, I don't know why. This is just, I love that. Mm. Yeah. Um, you also have to be a whole vessel, I think, like with that friend who was calling you. If you're not whole, you could be broken. Right. You Even can't contain what she's, yeah. what she's going right. through. Right. That's true. That's a very good point. Yeah. You can't you can't pour from an empty cup. Right. But That's but true. you're almost saying though that the more you do it, the stronger you get though. You do. Right. Because I, I'll surprise myself. I'll be like, I thought I was depleted. Yeah. I thought I was negative in my energy. Yes. Like I thought my energy had went gone to zero and went below. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, you feel so good because you put somebody else in such a good mood and you mm. feel right. so much better. That's what I wanted to right. say. That you're pulling them out of their hole, so it's somehow elevating you. Hmm. Yeah, but I, I want to say like when you don't get that reaction right. that you wanted, right. you don't know 
where your act of kindness went. You That's might not true. see it right away, but like we just celebrated Tu Bishvat, and the trees are bare, there's no leaves, there's no color, but you water them, you give them kind words, you hold the door open for them, and it's still, you know, bare and empty and lonely and looks so sad, and like you don't say thank you, right? Be patient. You, there's no way that it didn't have effect on the inside, mm -hmm. under the ground. Because the last thing that really spurts through the tree is is the fruits. Right, it's the Amazing. last stage of it. It's the last thing. Beautiful. And you might not be there to see it, but it's there. It's really so, inspiring, so ladies. We're going to close with this based on that, on that beautiful analogy. So many times we're all in the dark, we're in the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And there are no lights in the tunnel. And we feel like, where am I headed? And we have to constantly remind ourselves. Into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Vaihi yeah. Erev, Vaihi Boker. There was, there was night and then there was day. There was Vaihi Erev, it was dark, Vaihi Boker. We have to constantly say, Hashem, I know that my Yeshua will come. I know that my light will shine. But we can't. Always at the darkest hour, exactly, right after exactly. the darkest hour. Um, when we find that Hashem, Hashem, I'm going to find you amidst this very, very blinding dark darkness because that is where Hashem's brightness can shine the most. Mm. So sometimes we're so trapped in that tunnel that we can't really accept, we can't receive what Hashem is doing for us because we're like, Hashem, what are you doing? Where are you? I don't see you. But that's when we have to trust Hashem, you know, just as when a train enters a tunnel, you don't throw your you don't throw your tickets out the window and say that's it we're in the dark the conductor knows where he's going you mm. the passengers have no idea the conductor knows so the conductor doesn't throw his ticket off because he knows exactly where the route is Hashem's our conductor mm. it's gonna get dark sometimes it's very dark right now I feel like we're in the midst of a very deep galut right now with all the craziness that's going on in the world but by he both care. Very soon, everyone's Yeshua will come. The key is don't throw your tickets out the window. Just sit tight. Put your faith in Hashem. Spread positivity. Be besimcha. Hold on to your Put, seats, folks. Uh, it's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> buckle up. <laughs> Spread kind words to each other. And Don't send negative messages to Chodesh people. Chodesh Shvat. Could you let them know what Shvat? Chodesh Shvat. We are in, We're Shvat, in the Shvat right Shvat. now. And it is. it stands for Shenishma Besorot Tovod. We will hear good news. So this should be a bracha for everybody listening. If you are awaiting news of any kind or if you're anticipating some Yeshua, Bezrat Hashem, this should be the month that HaKadosh Baruch Hu blesses you with your bakol mikol kol. And you should have a tovot and refuot. And once again, Lilu Nishmat, Miriam, Sarah, Bat, Yaakov, Moshe. Thank you all for watching. And a thank huge you, thank you to my guests, in the world. Shimmy Azar and Alex Fletcher. And a big shout out to Yaakov Langer from Living Lahaya. Yaakov, who thank is the reason that so many people, people smile. smile and are inspired. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Thanks for watching this episode of Not Your Typical Podcast featuring two of my favorite people, Shimmy Adar and Alex Fletcher. And please tune in to Roy Wallerstein's event. It's benefiting Ornava. You know, Ornava is still continuing. So we need to help as much as we can. So if you can, open your hearts and donate. Make sure you watch the program. It's going to be unbelievable, but you're going to be inspired by so many things that night. So please do tune in to watch and Donate that $36 per letter for the Safer Torah. And if you have not yet subscribed to my podcast, please do. You can. Please do so. You can either um, subscribe to the Living L'Chaim channel on YouTube, but you could also subscribe anywhere you listen to your podcasts. Apple, Spotify, wherever. And we would love if you can give us five stars. So thanks for listening. Until next time. Living L'Chaim.